This is Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. Module 2, Common Types of Injuries and Their Risk Factors. Common Causes of Injury. By looking at emergency department visits, hospitalizations, and fatalities, we can determine the most common causes of injury. According to the Ontario Injury Data Report, these include, for unintentional injuries, falls, motor vehicle crashes, pedestrian-related injuries, sports and recreation, suffocation and breathing incidents, poisoning, and off-road vehicles. For intentional injuries, violence, and self-harm and suicide. Identifying risk factors. Injury prevention research has shed light on many important risk factors for each type of injury. These factors help injury prevention practitioners to identify high-risk groups and individuals so resources can be directed appropriately. Age as a risk factor. Age is an important consideration in a discussion of risk factors. Many important individual, social, and environmental changes occur as we age, which determine our exposure to risk. For this reason, some injury prevention practitioners work according to life stage rather than cause of injury. Age will be discussed as a factor that relates to risk of injury throughout this module. Now let's look at some specific causes of injury. We'll start with falls. While falls are an issue across the lifespan, each age has unique risk factors. Children, teens, adults, and older adults all have different risk factors associated with falls. For children, risk factors for falls include natural curiosity. Children are naturally curious about their environment, but inexperienced assessing risk. Young age is also a risk factor. Research suggests younger children aged 0 to 6 are at a greater risk than older ages. Low socioeconomic status, or SES, is also a risk factor. Research suggests that children coming from a lower SES are at a greater risk for falls than higher SES. Play equipment is also a risk factor. Risks associated with play equipment include level of maintenance, height, surfaces, and level of active supervision. Home environment poses risks for children. Risks in the home include furniture placed in close proximity to windows, the appropriate use of stair and window guards, and the level of active supervision. And finally, sex of a child is a risk factor, with research suggesting that boys have a greater risk than girls. For falls in teens, the risk factors include increase in risk-taking behavior. Teens show an increase in risk-taking behavior, which can increase the risk of experiencing a fall. Alcohol and or drug use is another risk factor. Teens may begin using alcohol and or drugs, which can increase the risk of experiencing a fall. Work conditions are another risk factor that teens face. Many begin working in the teenage years. Certain work conditions may increase the risk of falling. 
Sports and recreation is another risk factor. Participation in sports and recreational activities can increase the risk of falling. In adults, risk factors for falls include risk-taking behavior. Adults demonstrate various levels of risk-taking behavior, which can contribute to fall risk. Alcohol and drug use. Alcohol and drug use can contribute to fall risks in adults. Unsafe work conditions. Work conditions such as using heavy or tall equipment can increase fall risk. Environmental hazards are another risk factor for adults. Environmental hazards such as ice, snow, poorly maintained public places all can increase the risk of experiencing a fall. Falls in older adults. There's a high prevalence of falls in older adults and frail older adults have a high risk of injury. Because of this, fall risk factors and prevention strategies have been extensively researched for this age group. Risk factors tend to be described in four categories. Biological, behavioral, social economic, and environmental. Biological factors include mobility, chronic disease, visual impairment, and acute illness. Behavioral factors include history of falling, fear of falling, taking multiple medications, and lack of exercise. Social and economic factors include living alone, lack of social support, and lack of appropriate transportation. Environmental factors include building maintenance, home hazards, and uneven surfaces. Now let's turn to another cause of injury, motor vehicle crashes. Risk factors for motor vehicle crashes can be described in four categories. Factors influencing exposure. Factors influencing involvement in a crash. Factors influencing crash severity. And factors influencing post-crash injury severity. We'll look at each of these categories. Exposure. Factors influencing exposure to an on-road incident include age, younger drivers are at higher risk than older drivers, motorization, there's a positive correlation between the number of cars on the road and injuries, urban planning, Urban planning dictates the mixture of heavy traffic and highly populated areas, lack of space for pedestrians and cyclists. Involvement. Factors influencing involvement in an on-road incident. Speed. Driving at high speeds increases risks of being involved in a crash. Driver impairment. Impaired driving increases risk of being involved in a crash. And this includes alcohol, drug use, or fatigue. Distraction. Distracted driving increases risk of being involved in a crash. And weather conditions. Poor weather increases the risk of being involved in a crash. Crash severity. Factors that influence on-road incident severity 
include in-car protection, the availability and use of in-car protection, such as seat belts and car seats, can affect risk, excessive speed, higher speeds correlate to more severe incidents, roadside objects, the presence or absence of roadside objects can affect the severity of the incident. And finally, post-crash injury severity. Factors influencing post-on-road incident severity and recovery include emergency response time. The time and quality of response to a crash can influence severity of injury and recovery. And vehicle factors. The design of the vehicle can influence the severity of a crash. Next, we'll look at pedestrian injuries. Risk factors for pedestrian injuries include alcohol use. Alcohol increases risk if used by either pedestrian or driver. High speeds. Driving at high speeds increases the chance of pedestrian injuries. Urban areas. Urban areas with heavy traffic increase risk. And children. Children have a higher risk of pedestrian injuries than the general population. Older adults. Older adults, too, experience a higher risk of pedestrian injuries than the general population. Now let's look at sports and recreation. Risk factors for sports and recreation injuries are usually described as intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic are factors that relate to the individual, whereas extrinsic are factors that relate to the environment. Intrinsic risk factors include previous injury. Previous occurrence of an injury is a strong risk factor for experiencing another injury. Physical growth characteristics Physiologic factors related to growth can increase injury risk, such as muscle and bone development processes. And fitness level. Level of fitness and type of activity can impact injury risk. Extrinsic risk factors include such things as protective equipment. The use of protective equipment can impact risk including its condition and compliance with safety regulations. Rules, the rules of a game or activity can impact risk. And culture, the culture of a game or activity can impact the risk of injury. And finally, coaching. The coach can impact injury risk through the culture of the team, direction of practice and play, and tolerance to injury. Next, suffocation and breathing incidents. Risk factors for suffocation and breathing incidents include age, young children and adults over 65 are at higher risk than other age groups, sleep environment. Characteristics about a child's sleep environment can increase risk, such as loose blanketing, pillows, and unsafe sleep positions. Being in a hospital or nursing home can expose older adults to risk of entrapment in bed rails. Now let's look at poisoning. Risk factors for poisoning include age, children experience a unique risk because of their curiosity and inexperience with harmful substances. And environment. Environmental factors such as storage of medication and other harmful household substances impact the risk of injury.
Now let's look at off-road vehicles. In the Ontario Injury Data Report, off-road vehicles included ATVs, boats, and aircraft. The vast majority of emergency department visits and hospital admissions were due to ATV use. For ATV-related injuries, risk factors include sex. Males are more likely to experience an injury related to ATV use than females. And age. Children younger than age 16 experience a higher risk of injury. And ATV use on roadways. The majority of ATV injuries occur on roadways and involve collisions with another vehicle. Next, suicide and self-harm. Research examining risk factors for suicide and self-harm has allowed us to gain a better understanding of this issue. It's important to recognize that this research is correlational. No one factor or combination of factors causes this behavior. There are important distinctions between suicide and self-harm. Injury data does not allow us to properly distinguish these two concepts. For more information, please refer to the Ontario Regional Injury Data Report. Thus, risk factors included in this module pertain to suicide. Risk factors for suicide include such things as mental illness, the presence of a mental illness increases risk, previous suicide attempts, having made a previous suicide attempt is a strong risk factor, drug and alcohol abuse, using drugs and or alcohol increases risk, and hopelessness experiencing a feeling of hopelessness increases risk. Access to lethal means is also a risk factor. Having access to lethal means increases risk. Now let's look at violence. Violence cannot be attributed to one risk factor or combination of factors. The World Health Organization uses an ecological model to understand the factors that lead to violence. The ecological model of violence risk factors includes the individual, their relationships with others, factors pertaining to the community, and broader societal factors. For the individual, factors include witnessing violence, use of drugs or alcohol, presence of mental illness, age, and gender. For relationships, risk factors include alcohol or drug use, and having friends that engage in violence. Community risk factors include housing, unemployment, availability of drugs and alcohol. And societal factors include social norms and availability of weapons. The discussion of risk factors for violence is very complex. 
More information can be found in the World Report on Violence and Health, produced by the World Health Organization. This completes Module 2 of Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. Continue your training with Module 3, Injury Prevention Strategies. <laughs>